congratulations on the new season. It's Thank really you. enjoyable. Uh, and I wanted to ask a little bit about um, what it means to be a reluctant traveler. What what is you know the the kind of um, essential meaning of that? Well, it just it basically means you don't love you know traveling. My experience with traveling has been. Uh, you know, I love I love a a, a great uh, city. <clears throat> you know, I love a great hotel. Uh, what I don't necessarily love is the is the s sightseeing aspect of spending an entire day trying to you know get in every site you can you know you you can get to. Uh, it it always made me. Um, yeah, I always got, you know, tired of, of walking, of seeing, of snapping pictures, mm -hmm. and it got me irritable. So generally speaking, I found I wasn't having a good time, you know, uh, as good a time as I would be having if I was doing something else. <laughs> right, uh, right. That's really what it's about. Um, and um that's the uh definition of uh reluctance as far as i'm concerned so this season when we did eventually take yes. you to it we spent the whole day sightseeing there in florence right well that, that <laughs> is true and you know what it was it was very i got tired i yeah. was walking there were too many crowds <laughs> mm -hmm. and i got irritable <laughs> it it was very crowded i felt that uh, Eugene, actually, I, I felt your response to that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was actually a breath of fresh air when we actually got uh, when we actually got out of the city and you know into the back country. Yeah, and, and gorgeous. And David, would you talk a little bit about planning these these stops and the kind of the overview and what you're looking for uh, to kind of put forth with Eugene? Yeah, I think we're looking for a few different things. I mean, we're looking to give Eugene experiences that he would not normally have, um, uh, which is quite a few, I think. So that's, you know, that, that's that's useful for us. We also want to transport the audience to these beautiful places and to take them to places that maybe they wouldn't be expecting. So the whole um, point, really, of this season uh, where we, we, we travel from the very northern tip of Europe right down to the very southern tip of Europe is that hopefully we take a route that's a little less well-travelled. It's not the big main cities that everybody might be expecting. You know, uh, uh, instead, we start, um, you know, in midsummer in the very northern parts of Sweden. Uh, and we don't go through London, Paris and Rome. We, 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 we take Eugene to places that that he wouldn't be expecting, but also hopefully the audience don't know a huge amount about. So um, so throughout the season, hopefully everybody gets to see um, some places and some experiences that they know a little of, and maybe they might want to, you know, take them up themselves. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. Well, I want to be sure that I, I get this question in, Eugene. The uh, episode where you go to Scotland is it's really moving, uh, where you're interacting with, you know, your, your roots, with where your mom lived for a while. And... Would you share a little bit about, you know, maybe something that you that has really resonated and stuck with you since discovering, uh, you know, where your mom lived? Well, I think it was just seeing that it was that trip to the uh, mu museum, <clears throat> which is a uh, kind of a replica of the tenement apartment that they would have grown up in. Uh, and lived in in the Gorbals, right. uh, you know. Uh, seeing that was a bit of a shock because you know, my mom never talked about how difficult a situation it was living at home. That was her home, three rooms, twelve people. Um, you know, she never talked about how many people were in a bed together. She never talked about. It's, beds were put in the kitchen, you know, bed was put on the floor in the hall. Like it, it, I never heard that. So seeing it uh, just kind of resonated with me because it, it just struck me as, you know, odd and almost something lovely about the fact that she never talked about that as a hardship when you're growing up as a kid. It's just your home, right? Um, but I thought, wow, this is, um, this was really a tough way to, uh, to grow up. So, um, 
uh, yeah, it did. It struck a chord with me. Yeah, it's really, really moving. And then, uh, you know, just from that episode as well, uh, have you taken up salmon fishing over golf? I have to be honest. Uh, I, I I do love a uh, lovely uh, g- g- grilled uh, fillet of salmon. <laughs> Uh, I love a little uh, smoked salmon on a bagel with cream cheese. <laughs> yes. But um, I wasn't crazy about um, fishing for it. Um, it wa- it wasn't at all an, a totally unpleasant day on the river. <laughs> but um, I'm just not fishing is not a thing with me. I don't get it. I find it a little. I I don't know. I find it a little boring. You're mm-hmm. standing there with a thing. You keep. <laughs> You keep throwing it in the river and nothing happens. And, you know, um, so um, I love a love a good salmon, but would rather buy it. There's a very genuine moment in the show yes. where he looks at his watch as if to say, how, how long do we stand? In this <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and of course, I mean, I don't know if this maybe this is inappropriate, but I was watching it thinking. I would need the restroom. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, you're you're standing there and and waiters. I mean, I, yeah. I I you know, I don't know what happens if you you know really have to go. To be honest, right? Because right. it wouldn't matter, would it? it you just matter. do it. <laughs> Nobody would know. Nobody would know. Nobody would. Know. Fortunately, we didn't find out. No, so, you know. no, that's it. Uh, well, David, would you talk a little bit about shooting that episode with Eugene? And obviously, you must have known going in that it was going to be meaningful uh would you talk about what it was like to watch that unfold yeah it was John it was a real privilege is the truth it was um it it was amazing to be able to take you back to connect you know with with your past and and in some cases in the um in a synagogue to literally walk in the footsteps Mm -hmm. uh, of your mother and be in the place that your mum your mum would have been and I think you know we really wanted to move things on from season one too and I, I think I think just you know, it was really brave and brilliant of you, Eugene, to let us let us let us into that part of your your life because it's it was really it was really honest, it was really truthful. Parts of it were really raw, and and um and I think you get a real glimpse into you know into both Eugene and and you know the the the, the, the characters in his life that have made you who you are. So to be able to connect you to that was it was it was incredibly special. And it, and, and, and I'm not really one to kind of uh, get, get to to reveal too much of my you know life or my family and it was kind of interesting the way that that this uh this kind of gets peeled away Mm -hmm. and and um and it it did make for like a a, 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 well i think an interesting episode for sure but it, it it was really really fascinatingly interesting for me I love that we were able to do the two things in that episode too. So you know there was a, there was almost there was sort of almost the story of two families. You know there was the the royal family in right. the Oral, and then there was Eugene's family who had a very yes. very different experience of life in yeah. in Scotland. And so it, 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 being able to move between the the joy and the fun of uh, a traditional reluctant traveller episode, but also then into something that was far more emotional and and intimate, felt felt um, yeah. you know uh, really rewarding and special. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a great juxtaposition, I thought, of, of those stories. Uh, and then, Eugene, I just wanted to ask you, do you have this really beautiful rapport with these women in Sweden, these very strong, opinionated women, uh, with Jessica and her mom, especially baking bread with them? Would you talk a little bit about interacting with uh, some of the local folks and getting to know them? Well, it's it's the it's honestly the people that are creating the the greatest memories uh, for me on on these travels. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I love my experiences uh, dealing with it. and these women in Sweden were were like you know the the perfect example, the prime example. Uh, such such a such a great. I'd say you know I'd I'd kill for the disposition uh, <laughs> that that these these people have. Uh, you know, going through the Midsummer Festival, you know, and it, it poured rain, you know, it, I mean, it's such a fun festival and such a great celebration, but it poured and they got drenched and they're in their historic costumes. And I just felt, I felt, felt, felt so badly for them, be, but their energy and their positivity never waned at all. Yeah. And that's that, that just kind of, you know, my heart just uh, went out uh, to them. 
but um it was it, it and it really was funny how you know when the you know the raising of the maypole is a big part of the uh, midsummer festival but you know she she had to point out to me just how phallic <laughs> it it was and i th and i it took me by it actually <laughs> took me by surprise but she was also telling me that you know er, you know by by alluding to that that there were you know other things blossoming in bedrooms across herads <laughs> Uh, when the sun comes out, you know, other than other than flowers. Yeah, I mean that they seem to be having a a great time across the board. <laughs> yes. uh, I have to wrap. Thank you so much for speaking with me. I'm really enjoying this series. Well, that's great. So nice to hear. Thank you. Lovely to meet you.